Well, what is going on? Welcome back to Clean Chick Outdoors. Of course, I'm Clean Chick. This is the wonderful outdoors. Although we are about to head indoors because as the title says, I'm fishing in a Yeti on the ice for 24 hours, living the dream. Lake Winnipeg, we're doing a little 24 hour top five fish challenge. And like I said, Lake Winnipeg, fishing with Gone Fishing here. It's got another Yeti right there as well. Gone Fishing, Chris Gone. He's got an outfitter allocation here on Lake Winnipeg something new this year a couple of them are doing a trial where they have got rights to do overnight or guided overnights on lake winnipeg before this year it was never legal for an outfitter to do an overnight accommodations anywhere in manitoba but now they're introducing it to manitoba and like i said there's a couple of them right now on lake winnipeg that have the rights the allocations to do an overnighter and i get to be one of the lucky ones right now to spend overnight in the yeti seeing what we can get accomplished for some walleyes. I'm gonna hopefully cook up some fish tacos or fish and chips or something like that. We do have a big uh, wind storm coming in today where the winds are supposed to hit 80 kilometers an hour. So that's gonna get things a rocking. That's why I'm not doing the run and gun thing. We are sitting here in the Yeti, enjoying ourselves. I'm sure I'll introduce Chris on the video at some point, he'll be fishing like I said, over there as well, but we'll probably introduce him to the video at some point as, as well here as we, as we go. So let's get inside, make things happen, we'll catch a few fish, do a tour of the Yeti, all that fun stuff. Let's do it. What's this fish coming in right here? Ooh, ooh yeah. So that's one fish, it's a big one. Oh, it might be two though. Yeah, it's two fish. First I thought it might have been one fish and there was a head and the tail. It's still nice fish though. Come over here, boys. I got a minnow for you. This one won't be able to swim very far. Come over here. Come here. Oh, let's go to my live minnow. Let's go to that, my dead stick. Come on. Eat it, buddy. Eat it. Eat it. Do it. So just eat it? Yeah, it ate it, it ate it. It ate it. Nice. Nice. Two lines, baby. First fish in the Yeti. Doesn't feel very big, but it's the first fish. And it's gonna be fish tacos or some, some kind of fish. I think Chris and I are gonna cook something on the ice today. Nice, first one. We are gonna measure them since we're doing our top, top five in the Yeti. And we're sitting at 17 inches. So our first fish in the Yeti is a 17 incher. Love it. It's a, it's a small one, but it's a start. Oh, oh, another fish going. Another fish going over here. Did you just eat it? Oh, he might actually have it, I think. Yeah, he's got it. Yep, he's got it. Nice. Okay. Fish number two, it's happening, it's happening. Another eater, another eater. Okay, let's register our second fish here. 16 and three quarters. A little bit smaller than the first one, but still an eater, 16 and three quarters. We're, we're getting there. We're gonna, we're gonna have to upgrade these ones to get a big number, but we're getting there. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, he's coming to my dead stick here again. On that dead stick, they have caught a couple of those fish so far. All it is is just a treble hook with a live minnow and that's it. A little bullet sinker. I'll show it off and what I'm using type of thing. And this one right now I have on a jig and a live minnow. The bite's been pretty finicky on Lake Winnipeg as of late. Normally you can come to Lake Winnipeg and you can catch them on rattle baits, spoons, all that stuff, and which I'll probably try rattle bait at some point, but Chris said the bite's been more finicky and you have to downsize a little bit and just give them a little bit more time. And so far from what I've seen too, the fish are just like literally just swimming around so slow, so soft. It hasn't been hot and heavy by any means. I always say that, by any means. Come on, here we go. 
Nice, nice. Finally scored one of the rattle bait, baby. Nice. Come on, get up that hole. Yeah, fish number three of the day choked this rattle bait, and he took it deep. He will be a he will be a lunch fish for sure. And we got 17 and a quarter. Biggest of the day, not saying much, 17 and a quarter, but he will be another lunch fish for Chris and I. And if Chris has anybody come over for lunch too, I'm not sure what his plan is for sure yet. It's good to see that one to be a little bit more aggressive and choke down a rattle bait. Ooh. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Oh yeah, look at this one come up straight up. Come on, come on. So it's not very big but it just come right up with the rattle bait. There we go. Nice, right underneath the ice almost. Chased it right up. Oh yeah, this guy is too small to keep. We're not gonna measure this one. Oh, actually this is even a, this might be a sauger. It's got a little bit of a white tip tail, not much. I think a sauger for our, our fourth fish of the day. We're not gonna measure him because we can't catch five fish bigger than this. We don't deserve to do a, a top five. Well, so far a pretty fun day in the Yeti. I got those three walleye, that one sauger, but I think it's time to do a little bit of a, a walkthrough. If you noticed here, I don't know if you can see that these trailers drop down right to the ice. Chris has hydraulic ones, so it's nice and easy for him to move around. In fact, when I got here last night late, he was already moving them like 11 o'clock at night because he found a new pot of fish. He goes the extra mile. He doesn't just keep them set up on the same spot all year. He moves them around. This is like the third or fourth time he's moved him this year already. And he's always out looking for new fish, new pods of fish. He's not here pounding the fish that you're trying to fish for. In fact, right now he's out looking for more fish again, right? So it's kind of cool that they, he, he does that in a sense where he's out scouting. But anyways, let's go inside, give you a quick little rundown of the Yeti. And uh, yeah, show you how I have everything set up here. So pretty dialed in here. Not gonna lie, I'm gonna do the best job I can with filming this. This is a, a jackknife couch here. This is one bed. There's another bed right here that actually comes down there. It's hydraulic, it comes all the way down so you can sleep two on top, two on the bottom there if you needed to. More comfortably probably do one and a one type of thing. And then uh, we got three holes here. I like that these holes are a little bit further away from where you're fishing. I like to fish a longer rod. And it's so annoying when there's like, say all the holes that are tight to where you're trying to fish. And the only thing you can really fish is a tiny, tiny rod or a rattle bait, something like that. But there's fishable holes here. There's fishable holes on this side. Again, there's some that are tight, but there's also some that are further away, which is really nice. He's got two TVs in here. You'll notice here, oh, there's live scope right here, but there's nobody fishing right here. That's because We've got live scope right there and we can go right down the whole middle of this shack so you can see if, if he was fishing over there right now or somebody was fishing you would see their lures on this tv also on that tv they're linked together i don't know how it's going to be really hard going from this back to staring at a little tiny screen again having these on the tv has been so nice but anyway, it's got live scope set up in the shack, so you don't even have to bring your own electronics. It's got everything dialed in for you, ready to go. It's another little sleeping area here. This also turns into a table, so you can, you can bring that up if you wanna have somewhere to eat, sit, whatever, play cards, relax. There's another little bit of a sleeping area up here. I'm using it as a storage area there, my sleeping bag, my clothes. And here, this one doesn't have the working washroom. It's just storage right now. But he is ordering another bathroom or a washroom for this one. In the other Yeti, there is actually a toilet in there. So if you were, if you want to use the bathroom while you're out here, you have that chance. You don't have to go in a bucket. It's an actual flush toilet type of thing. So it's pretty nice that he has all the comforts of that. So. This is gonna be really popular for husband and wives, vacations in that sense, corporate groups, everything like that. He told me that he was out here actually on Super Bowl, watching the Super Bowl with some guys. They wanted to stay out and fish and watch the Super Bowl at the same time. It's so cool. He's got two of these Yetis. So if you have a bigger group, you can rent both of them or you can rent obviously just one. I would say four people in the shelter is probably like what you wanna fish comfortably. If you're gonna stay overnight, 
two, three people probably, because as soon as you start putting more guys in here with more gear, it's going to be a little bit tighter. Not that you can't do it, but four or five people to fish out of the day here, out of the day, out of the shack for the day, no problem. And you can fish all around too, right? You don't just have to fish in the shack. Right now, I'm thinking about going to drill some holes out here as well, because I'm seeing some fish when I turn the live scope. I can see actually fish swimming around, so it's kind of neat. There's an oven too right here for pizza, not just stovetop, not just for pizza, but for anything. There's a working oven, stovetop, microwave. This is like the ultimate for just getting away for a few days, right? Why not just go camp on the ice? You spend all that money, fuel, driving back and forth, hotel, anything like that, but why not just stay right on the ice and you're fishing? You wake up in the morning and you're fishing. And I got here late last night and I didn't do any filming yet, but I did catch three fish at 11.30 at night. It was slow up to there, but I got three fish 11.30. So you never know when they're gonna come through. Bite windows, right? So far today, a little bit slower, but that's, that's the way it goes. The bite's just been more finicky on Lake Winnipeg in general from what I understand right now, but yeah, what a life. It is supposed to get cold and windy today, but it isn't yet. I've been marking quite a few fish swimming here like 20 feet on this side of the shack. I think I'm gonna drill a hole, drop a flasher, and fish out there a little bit as well. We're gonna get a bait set up out here. Fish one in the shack, one line in the shack, and one line out here. I'm seeing lots of fish kind of swim over here so let's set up one outside as you can see i'm literally like right outside the door but i'll be able to watch that on the live imaging and if i see a fish there i can run out quick and work it i can go up high if i see some high flyers or i can run out here and hopefully get a fish before my rod goes down the hole oh boy oh boy oh boy oh boy nice Nice. I knew putting a dead stick out here might pay off. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Easy. 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 Come on. Come on. There we go. It's a little bit better one right there. We'll take it in, get it measured, and then get it back. Okay, a little bit better one right there. We'll get it measured probably at 20 two-ish I'm thinking awesome uh, not quite 22 21 and three quarter 21 and three quarter is what it turns to be going back nice good to see some life on the outside I had a feeling that putting a dead stick literally just like well 15 20 feet right outside my shack and I'll, I'll go through why I did that but I was seeing a bunch of fish kind of swimming around when I was turning the live scope like I talked about earlier so I thought, you know what, we're gonna put there, but I'll show you on the actual live scope of what's going on there, why I chose right there, maybe why the fish are swimming in that area. Okay, so outside, that's my bait there. Look at this little bit of a dip I got here. I've been watching lots of fish swim in this area there. In fact, there's a fish swimming right there again. So I drilled two holes out there right now, one at 20 feet and one at 35 feet. Right now I got the jig down here at 25 feet, but I can also move it out to 35 feet. And I can, I can still fish with the one hole inside. What I do is I just turn it right here and then I can see my rattle bait right there. So I'm just kind of like staying on this thing and I'm turning it back and forth, back and forth and looking And that one, that fish right there, I literally like just turned it and was like, oh, there's a fish on my jig. When I opened the door, my rod was already bent over. So I do have to keep a really good eye on that. Obviously I could, you know what? I could even take one of these covers and put it over that hole just so I won't lose my rod down the hole. Maybe that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab a cover over there and uh, put it on that hole just so I don't lose my rod. Nice, nice, a little bit better. Went back to just two rods in the shack for a little bit again. Kind of just switching it off back and forth. This will be my fifth registered fish, hopefully. Feels decent too. Oh yeah, come on baby. Come on, big head shakes, big head shakes. I think I got it up the hole now. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Nice. 
Shouldn't be big, shouldn't be small enough to turn or big enough to turn yourself around anyway. Or small enough, I should say. Nice! Yes! Love it! <laughs> yes! Awesome! Great fish. Great fish. Get a quick measure on it here. 25 and does it go 25 and a half? 25 and a half. Awesome! Well, my fifth fish is a gooder. This camera's gonna die. It's got one minute. 25 and a half incher in the Yeti, baby. Nice. Nice. <laughs> I pulled my other rod out of there right now and went back to two in the shack just because I was marking a bunch in the shack, but I still have those holes open so I can run out quick. Nice. That was on a little Acme one eighth ounce rattle master. I don't know if you can see it very good right there. One eighth ounce rattle master. Upsize the hook to a number four Barbarian VMC. VMC Barbarian is the correct term for that. And then I was actually had a, a live minnow on a tail hook just kicking down there. Boom. Man, I'm catching all these fish on different baits. I'm switching it up quite frequently. Spoon, rattle bait, jig. It's good, it's good. This is gonna be the 24 hour Yeti challenge. You have to come out and stay in the Yeti and beat my top five walleye. Now, if you come with two people, you, you can't count each other's fish. It's, you gotta keep them separate. That's the only, it's the only thing. Can't, you can't team up on me. You gotta be just one person. The things are looking up. It is, I think around two-ish right now. Yeah, one, 154. And Chris is starting to cook some shore lunch i believe which he offers part of his package i feel really spoiled right now that he took the fish that i caught here cleaning them up he's cooking them so we're going to go over there really quick he sets up a tent and then he does all his cooking in there and he'll serve you shore lunch as you're as you're fishing fresh fish what a life this is so good oh 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 nice that one thumped it a little bit delayed on the hook set that thing just thumped it. Awesome. Well, it's getting ugly out there. Bite's picking up though. Bite is picking up. Okay, that'll be an upgrade from our smallest one, which is 16 and a quarter, I think. Nice, 19 and three quarter. Okay, a little bit of an upgrade right there. It's getting windy outside, weather's moving in, but the bite's picking up. It is getting nasty out here, dude. Look at this guy cooking up shore lunch. Amazing. Oh, dude. Right from the lake to the pan in no time. So good. So that is amazing. He is in the shack cooking up some shore lunch. I'm so pumped to eat some fresh fish on the ice. I'm not even cooking it. It feels so weird to have somebody clean the fish and cook the fish and not do it. I'm not used to that at all. And if I did it, Chris wouldn't be used to that, right? Like we were both been guiding for so long and that's what we do. We love to do it, but it is getting nasty out here. It's supposed to hit 80K winds today. Ooh, cold too right now. Even though it's not that cold, the wind makes it cold. Ooh, it is getting so nasty out there. So nice to be inside. So nice. I still have my two holes out there. I can go fish if I see some marks out there, but I'm getting to the point where I'm gonna be just fishing in the shelter or in the, inside the Yeti and that's it. It's nice not having to like be packing up a, a hub or anything like that, or even a flip over like that. Obviously you pay attention to when it's gonna be this windy and you try not to put yourself in that situation. And, but it's Lake Winnipeg. There's gonna be people guaranteed that are trapped out here today. And, I wouldn't doubt if Chris even goes and have to rescue some people because he has the track, track truck and a lot of times people will call him and, and he goes and helps when he can but people I feel, I feel like and he this is not coming from Chris at all this is coming from me I feel like people will take advantage of, of him in that situation too where they're like oh well if I get stuck I know a guy that's out there he'll come get me right like he's the nicest guy in the world so he'll go help people at any given time like I know yesterday there was somebody stuck but it was like 11 miles away and he just said look if you can't get anybody it's closer in the next hour I'll come over there and I think they got somebody which is good but Chris was willing to just 
<laughs> stop everything he was doing and go over there just to, you know, he doesn't want to have every, anybody get stranded. That being said, his clients are always going to come first, but knowing that like Chris has those, that truck and the side by side, stuff like that, like you're, if you go out on a guided trip like that, like this right here, you're not going to have a situation where you're going to be stranded because he's going to pick you up at your vehicle and bring you out for the day, fish, take you back to your vehicle at the end of the day. It's so good. Looking good. I'll definitely take that over the Cinnamon Toast Crunch right now. This is way better. Well, catching some fish. Nothing too crazy. Chris took off to go do some more work again, like a, like a good guide will do. Oh. Oh, 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 come on, come on, yep, yep. He took a swipe at it, but he didn't connect. He's gonna come back. Come on, buddy. Here we go, here we go. Line it up, here we go, yep. Nice, nice. Oh, this is good. Nothing like catching fish when it's a whiteout storm out there. I think we got an upgrade. Give her a quick measure here, but it's definitely an upgrade. Greenbacks in the Yeti. Awesome. 20. 20 inches. Well, not a giant upgrade, but that's a that's a three incher. Not a three inch fish, three inch upgrade. Nice. This little one eighth ounce rattle master from Acme has been really, really good. And like I said, I'm using a number four VMC Barbarian treble hook. And I am putting on a live minnow, just hooking it up right behind his back fin. Okay, well, I'm not going to go out very long, but you need to just see what it's doing out here. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. You can't even hold the door open. Oh, my goodness. I should get that stuff picked up before it buries. Woo-wee! White out. I know, it's just sitting there. And the worst part is it's facing... It's facing this way. Like I'm, it's, I, I'm at its tail. It's not even looking at my minnow. It's oh, right behind it. Yeah, that's, it came in and oh, 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 come on. It just left. Like it, it angled out and left. Huh. Looked like he kind of stalled there. Yeah. Back. Nice, got him. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. And it's late already, like it's 7.30. Yeah. Nice. Not bad at all. That'll improve my, my top five, that's for sure. Yeah. Deadly, awesome, thanks buddy. Yeah. Nothing to it, right there. It's like eight o'clock right now. So it's a nice thing with sleeping overnight is and catch fish into the into the dark awesome we'll get a quick measure on it and get it back 21 and a half okay 21 and a half incher in the blizzard the storm going back well life is good nothing since that last fish but we are having some supper right now chris is making up some what do we got here Burnt ends. burnt ends big smoke barbecue the word on the lake winnipeg is that this is the this is the juice right here i know of uh, several people that have been using this other guys that do feed their clients with this you feed your your guests yep. with this all yeah, the time so they have we're having pulled pork burnt ends and yeah mashed i see potatoes. it mashed potatoes i see he's got a, a barbecue sauce here too for it for the pulled pork and yeah, it's super simple. It goes into boiling water on the stove. Like, how can it get any easier than that, right? 15, 20 minutes, done. Perfect. Love it. Like I said earlier, I'm getting so spoiled. I feel like I'm a little, like a plug that Chris did the cooked me fish earlier and now supper now. It's getting the, the, full, the full guided treatment here. So good. Right here, big smoke barbecue. I'm not gonna lie, it smells amazing. These burnt ends smell amazing. Oh, wow, that's good. Mmm. 
Yeah, I have a feeling I will be picking some of this stuff up before I leave Winnipeg tomorrow. Nice. Oh, it is 9.30. 9.30, still catching fish in the Yeti. Little guy. You know, it hasn't been hot and heavy today, but it's been pretty consistent. Like I've probably, this is probably like fish 15, 16, something like that. It's been consistent. If we were on a, you can only eat what you catch mission, we would not be going hungry on this trip. Yeah, it has been actually. <laughs> Spoon's been on fire. It's like, it's like one every 20 minutes. It's funny, hey, like. Yeah, it's just nice that they're Yeah, it, it hasn't, like the bite's ever been, hasn't been crazy today, but it's been like consistent. Look at this, fully guided. Yeah, like, that's a taco. <laughs> nice, 10 o'clock, still catching fish. Nice. I watched that fish work along the bottom for quite a long time and finally he got close to my my uh not my jig my spoon pretty good well it took till almost 10 30 at night to catch a burbot he's a little bit small to kind of hold here without dropping him and showing him off really well so i'll just have to hold him like this but he's just a little burbot pale light color nice i got one what time? What, what, what time is it? Eleven thirty-six. Talking with Cindy on the phone, and I caught another one. It's been like literally like every every half hour almost. I've been catching a fish. Cindy's my good luck charm. Caught another one. It's eleven eleven thirty-six. I should probably go to bed, but I'm just catching fish. Like, night bite's good. It's officially midnight, 12.01. I am going to crawl into bed. I'm not gonna stop fishing yet. I'm gonna keep fishing. I'm gonna fish until my eyes shut. I have gone so hard today. I think I've done 16 hours so far total fishing. It's been, it's been awesome. But I'm not going to show any fish I catch throughout the night unless they're like, a bigger one and an upgrade. I'll show some clips in the morning if I do catch any. I'm gonna keep my mic close to me here, or whatever, but obviously I'm gonna finally take it off. Head camera, I'm gonna take it off. My my neck is getting heavy, but I will run this camera right here non-stop. I've got a bucket set up. I'm just gonna run the one rod here through through the night to make it easy. I've got the jackknife bed right now set up. That's probably the most comfortable bed, I'm guessing if you if I brought it down, he probably would sleep the best, but I'm not looking to like sleep for eight, 10 hours right now. I'm gonna get a, about five hours of sleep right now and then finish off the, the morning. I'm gonna fish till probably noonish and then head out. The wind's supposed to die down about that 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and I wanna get on, the, get on the road. But right now I'm sitting at 108.5 inches, 108 and a half. So, not too bad for one guy by himself, hanging out in a shack all day. Can't complain with that at all. I've probably caught like 20 fish. Caught a bunch of eater size. We had that awesome fish shore lunch today. And then of course supper too. Oh, what this is just like, this is the dream. Spending some time out in the Yeti like this, I highly recommend like getting away with even like the family, right? Whatever, a bunch of friends, anything like that. Just get away for the ice or get away for the weekend on the ice. And yeah, and Chris works really hard. I want to th say thank you very much to Chris so far for everything he's done for me. Like I said, he he moved the Yetis last night yet, like at 10, 11 o'clock at night just to get them set up for the day. And he does that, does that all the time with all of his, his guests. He takes care of everybody. People keep booking for, as in like repeats that keep coming back. So he's obviously doing a good job and uh, better not, I better, he better not do too good of a job because I want to come back next year again. But anyways, Time for some shut eye. Hopefully, I'll catch some fish. I love it. Good morning. I never woke up. I fell asleep pretty quick. I'm not gonna lie, I was out. I was out fast, uh, having this nice controlled 
thermostat heat like you don't, don't have to turn it up turn it down you just set it set it and forget it this was uh amazing a great great sleep woke up no bait on my on my rod so if i probably would have been more uh alert i probably would have caught some fish throughout the night oh well it's all good it's early it's 5 30 5 39 so we're gonna get up get some breakfast going here i'm just having a muffin maybe some cinnamon toast crunch something super simple like that and uh get fishing we're gonna fish for a couple hours try to add to our total of 108 and a half inches try to try to stick a pig yet hopefully a big mama a mama a mama jama anyways let's do it nice what time is it 550 took 20 minutes only nice well it won't be an upgrade but we already have uh, something to eat again if we were eating fish today that did not take long at all haven't even had my muffin yet this one eighth ounce little rattle master has definitely been my best spoon for sure my best my best lure i should say for this trip it's uh it's outfished everything i know it's like it's got a big live minnow on it. actually it's got a small minnow on it it's not even a big live minnow. it's a small live minnow but all they're just doing is like trying to trying to get their attention these fish have just been just cruising ever so slowly i got that one's attention and it's like as i was pulling it away it wasn't eating i was just rising slowly and then also i gave it a little bit of a jiggle jiggle and just boom come on buddy come on here we go reach up reach up yeah good fish nice he lunged at it when he finally ate it that's a little bit better fish my drag's a little bit loose right now hopefully i got a good hook set on him i feel like i didn't get an amazing hook set had my drag a little bit loose i'm gonna get him up in the hole here and then i'll reach down get the hole cover definitely a little bit better definitely a little bit better it's going to upgrade one of my fish for sure nice green back love it that's going to be a little bit upgrade jigs inhaled quick measurement 23 and a quarter nice 23 and a quarter aren't they a cool colored fish the greenbacks i was talking about chris last night too their nose seems to be so much pointier than a normal walleye awesome awesome see ya so this is the jig that i have down there this isn't the one i obviously have don't have down there there's no line attached but it's a meathead jig from frostbite it's tungsten pure tungsten and this size i've been using right now for lake winnipeg has been a 3 16 i like that it's a little bit smaller presentation so the middle can move it around but it's heavy enough and dense enough that it sinks quick and then honestly they have an unreal shank on it super super sturdy i'm very very confident with a big fish with uh, a, this this jig right here because it has a really good shank on it i think this is going to be a really good a really really good uh jig for lake winnipeg definitely and of course other places too but right now and i got that the minnow on on here the live minnow i've been nose hooking them and then on the spoon i'm running i'm tail hooking them so just something just a little bit different on each but the two baits have been the best the the meathead jig and then the acme rattle master one eighth ounce and like i said this is three sixteenths been really good yeah that's well, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's better that's not a sauger that's better you're good luck dude you're good <laughs> luck dude you're good luck Bring unreal you're good luck not bad i don't think not bad uh, a little i wouldn't be an eater a little bit bigger than an eater oh, crush the rattle bait easy easy you want to know where I'm looking at yeah that. right like, rattle baits are the scariest like when you to, grab a fish they're the scariest. right <laughs> and they just va especially when they're vanished right oh, like oh, he's on it. yeah okay what do we got here we got 21 and three quarters nice an inch and three quarter inch upgrade thanks chris good yeah, luck no oh of course right you're supposed to go the other way you donkey yeah. deadly well a little bit of an upgrade there my 24 hours of exactly fishing time is almost up i've got a couple more minutes yet it is still kind of nasty out here it's cold anyway but with that fish it's bright too 
that will wrap up this video. Thank you so much to Chris Gone Fishing. Chris Gone, his, all his Instagram will be linked below and how to get a hold of him in terms of phone numbers, Facebook, all that. He books up pretty quick, books up pretty quick. Like I said, he doesn't just, maybe I said, I don't even know what I've said in this video, right? Like it's, it's been a day and a half later, but he not only just does the Yeti, he also does run and gun fishing as well. He can accommodate your trip. He's got two Yetis available here and uh, it's so easy to do. Transportation right for, to the edge of the lake, to the uh, Yetis, all that stuff. So you don't have to worry about burning your vehicle up out here. And yeah, so thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate it. I honestly can't wait to do it again. I, I've never fished so hard, but yet been so relaxed. I fished for 24 hours total and uh, it was a blast. My total inches, I think it's 114 inches. So I challenge you, anybody that comes out here to fish with Chris, to come break 114 inches in 24 hours. Now keep in mind, if there's two of you, you just gotta do your own little separate competition. Maybe Chris will have some kind of thing here. You talked about maybe a board and trying to keep track of who's, you know, who's the number one. So right now, because I'm the only one that's done it, I'm the leader, 114 inches. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget, get outside.